What is up, everybody? Welcome to another podcast. Um, man, I'm excited about today's podcast. Uh, we're talking about some pretty cool stuff. Um, you know, this is investing, real estate, business. This is entrepreneurship. This is life. That's kind of our tagline with the Real Wise podcast. So we're covering a little bit of uh, entrepreneurship today. We'll cover more real estate one, you know, here and there, and we'll also cover more life for sure. But just a little entrepreneurship. So welcome, my friends, to the Real Wise podcast. Uh, excited to have you. And um, what I thought we would talk about today is uh, something that is, uh, you know, kind of near and dear to my heart. Uh, and that is people that are starting businesses and owning a business. Um, one of the hardest things you'll ever do, one of the most rewarding things you'll ever do. Um, and this is, we pulled this particular topic off of a blog that we recently did, which is uh, three cru crucial questions that can catapult your profits for entrepreneurs. And so you can you can see that from the real wise site, but I just wanted to kind of break that down a little bit. And the reason I thought it would be a good time to do that in May, as we're approaching the middle of May here, is just everything going on in the world. We've got uh, you know a lot of stuff happening as we're entering the summer of 2022, and you know COVID and interest rates and political this and geopolitical that and all that nonsense, it, it doesn't, it adds up for a business owner. It adds up for an entrepreneur. And I'm here to tell you it's all going to be okay. Uh, and for those of you that are watching on YouTube, you're kind of seeing me smile a little bit there. It is going to be okay. These, all these things uh, really uh, question and challenge the entrepreneur and you got to stay in the game, man. You got to stay in the mindset of what these challenges provide you with. And you might be saying, well, what the hell did these challenges provide me with? Because right now I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it on a supply chain model. I'm feeling it on revenue, lack of revenue, perhaps. I'm feeling it on, I got revenue, but I don't have profits. I'm feeling it on interest rates. I'm feeling it on my spouse. I'm feeling it on, well, that didn't really sound that good, but you get what I mean. You're getting this in all kinds of ways. And the first thing that I would give you as far as any kind of advice is to just breathe. I've been doing this now, this entrepreneur game for the last 20 some years. And it's amazing what breathing and, and breathing right and just really does. And I would uh, give you that as the first set of advice. So what did we talk about in the blog, that blog that uh, I mentioned uh, earlier that made me want to create this into a podcast episode? And so I believe there's three questions in today's environment that can really catapult you to a profit because it is getting tougher out there. If you haven't felt it, you're going to feel it. And if you've been feeling it for a while, just relax. It's normal. This is what inflation feels like. This is what business feels like. This is what being an entrepreneur feels like. It's not all roses and cupcakes and whatever else that's positive. Puppies, maybe. Puppies aren't positive, though, but um, it's, uh, it's challenging and it's tough. But these are the things that are going to make you a better investor. And I think with these three questions you're going to be okay and you're going to be really good. So let me just give them to you straight on what these are. Um, now, these are, are three questions, but they're probably more than that. I've got, I've got three questions, but there's probably more than that that's going to, I'm going to summarize in this podcast. The first one is, you know, gives you a mindset thing where this all could be so different. You know, if you started your business on your own and within a year it was making twice the salary of your current job, if you haven't started one, you'd be pretty happy, right? Well, uh, but what if in addition to that, you were only working half the hours of your current job? There's a trade-off there. 
I, I know today as an entrepreneur, I get paid in other ways. Um, I get paid in like, my time is different and what I do with my time. And, and it's not about the money. Um, and I, it's not because I have all the money in the world. It's just because my currency adjustment in my mind, I've changed. And that's been the biggest payoff for me um, in, in doing this for the last couple of decades. That's why I know it's going to be okay. Um, so it could be different. That is right. You could be working for half the hours and twice the pay. No one is telling you what you, uh, have to do and what you should be doing. I'm giving you a little bit of thought to think about and advice, <clears throat> but you know, you're an entrepreneur or going to be an entrepreneur. And I think that, uh, I'm better suited to per, uh, predict that you're going to have challenging times. Like we're all in right now. And so, um, I think the question that you should be asking a lot is, you know, can I do better? <clears throat> Sometimes I get um, chast chastised for this a little bit. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm always trying to improve myself physically, at least as of late, or educationally or intellectually. Those might be very related topics. Um, and everything else in life as a father, a spouse, that type of thing. And so I think that's a really good question for businesses today. Can, how can I do better? Not can I do better? We all can do better, but how can you do better? Um, if you want greater profits from your business, it's really important to perform regular and specific reviews of all the aspects of your business. Um, we have um, we've got a program called Pocket CEO. This isn't an advertisement, it, although it probably sounds like one. And one of the things that I do uh, that I have our clients look at is this idea of this um, SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And the interesting thing is with that is there's always those items coming around, but they change. And this idea of changing is what you need to grasp as an entrepreneur or a future entrepreneur. So how can I do better? Start understanding that there's always going to be uh, strengths that you have and your company has. There's always going to be weaknesses that you have and your company has. There's always going to be opportunities that you have and your company has. And finally, there's always going to be threats uh, that you have and your company has. No matter what industry you're in, if you do sell widgets, or if you are in real estate, or if you make pens, uh, auto business, whatever you're in, cleaning business. Um, I know these things to be true by being an entrepreneur for the last 20 years. Um, it, you might ask yourself that question then, how can I do better? Or how can we do better as a company? Albert Einstein once said, it's impossible to solve a problem with the same kind of thinking that created it. I remember hearing that for the first time and I thought, man, that's, that's right on. That, that guy said a lot of stuff that had nothing to do with physics or space uh, or science, but had to do with life. And uh, this was one of those. So I'll say it again. It's impossible to solve a problem with the same kind of thinking that created it. So you might need some help on this. Your best resource is to really talk with somebody who has faced these issues before, found out the effective solutions for them. That's why I'm glad you're tuning into the Real Wise podcast because we tackle these things. True entrepreneurs never waste time or energy kind of reinventing the wheel. Uh, they just really go and, and talk with the guy who created the wheel in the first place. So uh, that's probably really good advice here that I would give to you is, um, uh, you know, here's a tip that I've also heard a lot of business owners use that when reviewing business strategies, most people come from what's wrong and how can I fix it perspective. Here's a little bit better idea on how to change that. Start from what's right about this issue. Again, it's an issue. It's a challenge. But what's right about it? For example, I've got a, a loan in our commercial lending side that is um, not to any, the client's not fault. It's certainly, I don't feel like we're the majority of the fault. We're always a little bit of the fault because that's how we can take responsibility. 
But this is a battle between the closing segment and the title company. It's not even a battle. That's way too powerful of a word. And I asked the question, what's right about this issue? Well, what's right is we have a client and they're ready to close and we've got a property that's ready to close. So that's what's right about it. We're really, really close. But when you come with it from that positive perspective, instead of negative, you really create and have creativity on your side. And problem solving is really kind of switched on by that. And it's in alignment before you even start to solve that problem is you're focused in, in really providing a positive approach rather than negative. Instead of saying, what's wrong? How can I fix it? That's negative. Talk about what's right with the issue. It's a really... It's a really good trick and I would it does take some practice, but I would really encourage everybody to do that. And so the five right questions, I know I said three earlier, but the five right questions in asking these will lead you to the answers that you're really seeking uh, about this challenge. And it could be a challenge from the economy. It could be a challenge from a client. It could be a challenge from a manufacturing um, a supply source. It could be all kinds of interest rates. It could be all kinds of challenges. So the first one was what's right about this issue, situation, or strategy. Get clarity on the task at hand. The second one is what makes it right? What is it? Get specific with that. What is the issue or what is it about those things that make it an effective process for the situation or an effective product, an effective client, any of those, get specific, what makes it right? The next one is what would be ideal? Get creative, what would be an ideal outcome of this? What would be the ideal strategy or solution for this issue? Put it on paper. I love the aspect of taking it from mind to actually writing that out. I think it's a good exercise. And there's something about taking it from the mental to the physical and writing it out that I don't know, makes it cut, you know, makes it from magic to real. It brings it into reality. So what would be ideal? Get creative and, and again, be specific with that. Number four, what's missing that could bring about the ideal situation? I love these. These questions kind of daisy chain together and really kind of walk you through this positive uh, approach to challenges and problems for entrepreneurs. Um, what's missing that could bring about the ideal situation? Get resourceful here. What do we need to find, create, add, invent, or reach to make this happen, to bring this as a solution? This is an example of one. I'm working on an event that I'm the MC. I'm hosting 1,200 people uh, coming up. And uh, we really wanted to bring some star power in there. And I can't disclose I could disclose, but then I'd have to kill you. I can't disclose who the star power is going to be. But I took this approach and I, I applied it from a positive end. I had no idea how I was going to get a hold of this person. And now I'm talking to this star powers people every day. So this works. Put the power of positivity out into the universe. If you've been with me for a while, you know, I've written the book, The Alchemy of Wealth. I totally recommend people reading that. Um, again, there's my advertisement, but in the alchemy of wealth, I talk about putting this out to the universe. The universe has a way of getting out of your way and making things happen. As long as you take a positive uh, approach and take action as well. So, uh, the fifth one is what will it take to put in what's missing so we can bring about the ideal situation? I've used this on real estate deals. I've used this on challenges and problems I didn't think I could get out of. I've used this on all kinds of stuff. I'm telling you, this process works. This daisy chain of questions works. And it works, again, really well when you take it from the mind to pen on paper. Uh, but it also enables you to go to your team with that and delegate a lot of this stuff. So get busy here. What is it going to take to make this issue strategy or situation ideal from a positive perspective? Using this what's right perspective will over time change your complete mindset 
for really everything, not just your business, but also your personal and family life too. See, I told you we're entrepreneurial, real estate, investor, family, life, you name it. We just brought it back. That's called a loop in the speaking world or comedy world, if you will. Um, but really, I, I love this. What's right perspective? That's what we're going to name this. But it could change your mindset on everything. Again, not just with your business, but personal and family life as well. Think of how many conflicts occur each day in the home where the words what's wrong describe their mindset. I do this all the time and I got to change this. I am going to change this. So we need to start asking what's right with this situation. Um, and I, and I, I'm telling you, as soon as I say that, it changes my chemistry in my mind. I'm like, yeah, what is right? You're right. There's a lot of things that right. I'm not even looking at this. I feel better. So I just want to uh, encourage you and challenge you to try this next time a conflict shows up. And it will. It'll show up today. Uh, in the next 24 hours, you'll be bombarded with conflict. Ask the question, what's right with the situation, not what's wrong. What's right with the situation when it shows up in your life or business, personally, whatever that is, and see how different your attitude becomes immediately. It's a fantastic way to solve problems, the what's right perspective. So it would also be a good scenario for a business, especially in, in the times that we're in now, uh, with markets seem to be crashing, the stock market, the crypto market, the real estate market is taking a hit, you know, interest rates are up. But what's right with those situations. I think it's going to spell a lot of opportunity for people. And I really, really would challenge you to follow that thought process and uh, this daisy chain of questioning to bring you to uh, a different attitude, but to change the chemistry that's going on in your brain, but also change the opportunities that are going to come your way because of this problem in your business or, or, or uh, your entrepreneurial journey. So it'd be a good practice to sit down every 30 days and review the questions uh, that I, the next series of questions that I'm about to give to you. So that's what I meant earlier. I know it said three on the title, but these are really series of questions that you get through uh, this. But this is what I would do. And this kind of plays in line with this uh, with this um, SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I don't know if you've had the, uh, an opportunity <laughs> to do this analysis. We do that with our clients for our people that are enrolled in the Pocket CEO program, but you can certainly do this on your own. But also maybe take a look at these six questions I think are really, really important. Number one, what action did I take this month to support my business? If you know the market's changing, did you take action to support it? Uh, an example of that would be, hey, I took debt that I had at a variable interest rate and I roll it into a fixed interest rate because when you're in an interest rate environment that's rising, we're only going to be paying higher debt service down the road or in the near future if we don't make that change today. Good example. Number two, what example sorry, what action did I take this month to grow my business? What action did I take this month to grow my business? If you really sit back and think about that, growth comes from revenue. Revenue comes from sales and sales cures a lot. Some people say it might cure everything. I think Mark Cuban uh, said that. It cures a lot. I don't want to put words in uh, Mr. Cuban's mouth, but I also think that uh, asking this question will prompt you to think about what you can do in the next 30 days to grow your business as well. It doesn't all have to be with revenue. It could be with expense saving as well. So keep that in mind. Number three, what action did I take this month to approve my effectiveness? I know a lot of businesses that are good, but how do they become great? I know a lot of businesses that are great but how do they become superstar fantastic? You know, we, we can always improve. We can always improve. So uh, how, what do we do to improve the effectiveness individually or to improve the effectiveness of our company? 
And this might be something that you challenge your team on. This is a great set of questions to bring to them as well. Number four, what action did I take this month to improve my, not effectiveness, efficiency? How did I get more efficient? Maybe I mixed those two up in the previous questions. The first, the third question was effectiveness. The fourth question is efficient. Um, and, and efficient is things like saving time, saving resources. Effectiveness is how much time did it take you to do that? How effective were you in using those items? So there's a little bit of difference there, but I think it is huge with regard to business effectiveness and efficiency, especially when we have supply chain challenges, especially when we have interest rate changes, especially when our clients and customers are paying more for food and energy and uh, materials themselves. And they might be frustrated or a little fearful about what's going on in the future. So these two questions, three and four, how do I improve my effectiveness? Number three, and how do I improve or what action did I take to improve my efficiency? Number four are really good questions to uh, become uh, a habit for you to ask every 30 days. Number five, uh, what specific results have I created this month through my efforts? Um, results are everything. That's how we keep score. Now, you don't want to take this to the extreme and try to keep results in everything, but results certainly are quantifiable and measurable. And uh, that's how we improve. That's one of the ways that we improve. So I would encourage everyone to start looking at results and start keeping track of key metrics, key performance KPIs, uh, uh, key, key performance uh, indices, or metrics that help you understand the more major important parts of your business and really what have you created over the last 30 days to help those efforts. And then finally, number six, how can I do better next month? Like that's a summary question of all those questions to say, how can I do better? Put an action plan together and get it on the calendar as action steps or on your phone. That is how you're going to improve that business. That is how you're going to make progress with your business in the face of challenging times, which, you know, I believe we're in right now. I think May of 2022, they haven't actually said it, but we're in recessionary mode, uh, GDP growth and, and all the other stuff that's happening with our economy. We're in recession right now. They, they, they just haven't come out and said it, but we are. So, um, onward and upward, how do we, we take what we learned here on this podcast and, and apply it? Well, a couple of things. Let me kind of uh, give you some insight with this. The truth is the more decisions that you make and the more action you take, the more efficient you become. And the more efficient you become, the better results you create. Plus, it's going to take you progressively less time to achieve those results. And what you do with that extra time is up to you spend on your health, on your family, building a new business, whatever. But I, I really think this is where a coach comes into play. Or, you know, I mentioned earlier, we have a program. I'm not pushing that, but our pocket CEO program is really, really wonderful where we kind of take the wheels of your business and, and go through all of these exercises. But a coach will help you see things that you cannot see. Uh, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, all of the successful entrepreneurs and athletes, they all use coaches. Uh, and, you know, they can, they can really, uh, again, bring you insight where you can't see it that's going to help you and your business and company. So uh, I just kind of want to point that uh, out. Uh, so making greater profits in your business comes down to these questions that we went through on this podcast episode, you know, what's working, what's not, uh, lead with what's working uh, narrative. That's the positive way. But really, how can I do better? The responsibility relies typically on you if you're the entrepreneur, if you're the business owner. I like that. I know a lot of people try to skip responsibility. They blame, they put excuses up. 99% of the time, people don't like that. I don't like it when I have to say, you know, that's my job. That relationship failed because that's, it was on me. Um, that business failed because it was on me. Um, that um, client 
I failed that client. You know, I could have done things a different way. Now, there's certainly, uh, I'm not trying to have anybody beat themselves up. But at the same time, if you don't take responsibility for challenges in your business, then who else is going to? Not your employees, not your contractors, subcontractors, not your clients, not your lenders, not anybody, but you. And that's why all of these questions that we talked about during this podcast episode is going to help you in your business in times of challenge and uh, certainly where we are today. So that's it. That's the Real Wise podcast for this uh, session and this week. I so appreciate you turning in real estate, business, entrepreneur, and life. That's what we're about. And uh, we're just enjoying this. So we look forward to seeing you in the next podcast. Uh, remember, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, if you want to see this mug, and our guests coming real shortly. So again, enjoyed the time uh, with you on this podcast. Hopefully you can take uh, the information that we got and uh, use it to your advantage because I do think that there is a lot of opportunity coming our way. We will see you next uh, podcast episode.